Hey, what's going on folks? It's your boy Ryan and thank you again for hitting up Just My Opinion with your boy Ryan. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and truly appreciate it. As I always say in every video, my plan is to talk to the camera. You guys talk back in the comments. Let's have a good back and forth going on some of my takes. What do you think about them? Do you disagree? Agree? And as always, Hit me with a recommendation if you have another show or or movie that you recommend I watch and, and critique or review or whatever have what have you. So today I want to do something special. Uh, as I mentioned, I review everything. You know, movies, shows, get my top fives and so forth. Uh, so today is no different, but I'm going to be talking about a sports documentary uh, that I saw on Netflix. It's actually a series and. When I find a good documentary and it you know it captivates me, hey, I'm all in. So let me just start by saying I feel like ESPN's 30 for 30 has had that sports documentary game on lock for years. All right. I mean, there's so many great documentaries. Uh, <laughs> you know, fun fact, I think they're a great uh, Christmas gift or Father's Day gift. Uh, I bought my dad uh, a few uh, 30 for 30 uh, DVD packs when DVD packs were still a thing. But anyway, ESPN's 30 for 30 has always had the game on lock. And on top of that, uh, you know, The Last Dance, the whole Michael Jordan, you know, documentary with the Chicago Bulls. Also, you know, wonderful documentary. I I've watched it twice already. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I do feel like Netflix is, you know, See, you know, saw what ESPN was doing and was like, you know what, you guys might be holding it down, but hey, hold my beer. I think we got some stuff that could possibly compete with some 30 for 30s and some last stand stuff. Uh, Netflix has two uh, very, very uh, interesting in-depth doc sports documentaries on um, Netflix called, um, one is called Bad Sport and the other one is called Untold. Uh, and I've been locked in on both of them. Uh, but more specifically, I'm going to talk about the um, bad sport, uh, the episode that really caught my attention and, I, and, and made me feel like, you know what, ESPN still got the crown, but I feel like Netflix can be like, hey, we, we on your tail. But um, Netflix is a um, bad sport. They have an episode that I, I just saw not long ago um, called um, Hoop Schemes. And for those who are unfamiliar with this particular story, this is the story of Steven Smith or Steven, AKA Headache Smith, and just how he got involved in this whole point shaving scandal that rocked the sports in the 90s and definitely took a whole bunch of people down at Arizona State University, as well as, you know, some bookies and, and, and so forth. So this was a great documentary. Steven Smith came from Dallas, Texas. He came from a poverty stricken neighborhood. He was raised in a single household, which is him and his mom. But his basketball skills were good enough to the point where he was able to get a full ride to Arizona State University for basketball. So it was Steven, in addition to a good handful of other uh, top recruits that got to go to Arizona State. And these guys were resp solely responsible for putting Arizona State University on the map when it came to basketball. So you know what comes with that. You know, they were treated like rock stars. Uh, one of the guys even said in the documentary, we were literally treated like rock stars. Women wanted to be with them. Guys wanted to be like them. Just a whole thing that comes with that. Just this is the whole, the whole, you know, perks that comes with being big man on campus. You know what I'm saying? So that was the life. That's what you would, that's, you know, you think, you think that's, you know, there's what more could you ask for as a college student? But the only thing that they were missing was some of that money. Being that these guys, you know, didn't come from money, you know, they still had the typical woes of a broke college student. You know, yes, I play ball very good. I got the popularity. I got women, this and the third, but I still got to go back to my dorm room, heat up some oodles and noodles, or I got to find out where I'm going to get my next meal once the cafeteria on campus closes. So into the picture comes Joe Gagliano and Benny Simmons. Benny Simmons was like a bookie and he goes to Joe and says, hey, I'm really cool with the star athlete on Arizona State's basketball team. And I you know, feel like he can help us win some money, fix a few games. That'd be kind of a good kickback for us. Joe Gagliano feels like this is too good to be true and wants to talk to Headache himself before moving forward with anything. 
The two have a conversation and the agreement was as follows. Joe says, hey, I need you to fix a few games. If you can do this for me, I'll give you $20,000 for the games. For $20,000 per game, I only need you for two games. So in return, um, headache goes, I have no problem with that on one condition. I can't lose these games. These are some underdogs we're coming against. I'm not going to lose. You know, I might be going to the NBA if things work out right for me. So I can't be out here looking crazy losing games to, to, to teams that I'm supposed to beat. The two have that agreement. That is no problem. Uh, so with that agreement, uh, this is what Joe would do. Joe would bet his money on the underdog. He would bet that the underdog would only lose by a certain amount of points or less. Uh, so for those who are unfamiliar with sports betting, like I'm not a big gambler. I'm not into sports betting at all, but just doing my research, here's how it works. Joe would bet the underdog, uh, bet, bet money on the underdog that they would lose a close game instead of getting blown out. And in result by doing so, he would win a lot of money. Um, I can't remember the team. I want to say it was maybe Oregon or, or um, Washington. Either way, it would go like this. Joe would go to, to the casino and he would say the underdog is going to lose by six points or less to, to Arizona State. And if he hits that number right on the head, he would win a lot of money. And so what Joe did, he took $500,000, him and a couple of his friends, I think his father-in-law as well, and they would go they'd take a trip to Vegas and they would hit every casino they could find and they would bet $9,900 specifically at each of these casinos. They would put $9,900 on the underdog to lose by six points. Uh, you can't do anything higher than $9,900, at least back then, because doing anything higher kind of raises red flags and it brings attention to yourself. So you don't want to bet anything more than $9,900. So as I mentioned, they took $500,000 worth of money and they bet it to every damn casino they could find. And a headache, you know, he carries out his end of the bargain. You know, he makes sure that they would only win the game by six points. And you think, how can you do that? Easy. You know, uh, Headache was the point guard of of the Arizona State Sun Devils, so he's pretty much like the quarterback on the on the basketball court, though. So, you know, the strategy that Headache had in mind was, hey, we're gonna get to a big lead, you know, whip their ass in the first half, and then the second half, momentum starts to fade, mistakes start to happen. <clears throat> Slowly but surely, the underdog would cut that. 15 to 20 digit deficit to six points. So by the time the buzzer um, sounds, that's exactly what the number was, six points. And, and that, that was just the agreement that they had. Uh, Joe held up his end of the bargain. He gave him, oh, and his own teammate, by the way, uh, his teammate was also in on it as well. Um, Joe said, if you want to bring anybody in on it, that's fine. I'll pay y'all, you know, the, the agreed upon money. So his uh, teammate, Isaac Ice Burton, was also in on it as well. So these two would actually conveniently make mistakes and turnovers and, you know, mess up the momentum of the game in order to let this underdog come back only to lose by six points. So the agreement was there. Um, um, both uh, Headache and Ice got their $20,000 a piece and in return because Joe and his friends bet so much money Joe walked away with $1.1 million so everyone was a happy camper and so forth and, and just a side note I'm just going to say this documentary really taught you know really covers it all in terms of you know betting and, and greed and stuff like that greed in the term of not knowing to walk away um, definitely going to say knowing your worth that definitely seems one-handed. It's like, granted, you know, these these are you know him and um Isaac Burton. They came from the poverty-stricken neighborhoods and stuff like that. They're not used to having that much money at one time. So, twenty thousand dollars probably felt like a million dollars to 
to these uh, basketball players who are not used to money. So, but anyway, I definitely feel like they could have known they were worth a little bit more than that. So, and also money management, man. Like these guys got their money and they just blew right through it. You know, which of course I felt like, you know, drew some red flags as well. He was like, okay, these, these kids were broke just last week. Now they out here, you know, making it rain, just balling all over the place. I think they bought cars, jewelry, stuff like that. They bought stuff as if they were already in the NBA. So I'm sure that brought a red flag as well into this whole, you know, scandal. So things went well game one. Things also go well game two. Same thing. Moments before the game, Joe gives headache a call. Hey, I need you to win the game by six. And the exact same thing happens. They get out to a big lead in the first half. Second half, they let the team come back and they win exactly by six points. Everyone's happy again. And so I don't want to spoil the rest of the documentary of it, um, but things get a little uh, little dicey in terms of not knowing when to walk away. Um, I do feel like this is a, this is an example of why there needs to be some type of you know financial literacy you know literacy cat class when it comes to like kids in high school and stuff like that because these guys essentially made forty thousand dollars just to to fix a few games. I mean. To me, it's a victimless crime in the terms of it's not like anyone got murdered, anyone got hurt, you know, beat up and anything like that. But nevertheless, they made forty thousand dollars and they blew, they just blew through that money because you know they they didn't know any better. I mean, you were young, hungry, you know, wet behind the ears, you know, college kid, and someone th just throws forty thousand dollars at you. What you supposed to do? So. I'm definitely not criticizing anybody in the in the, uh, in the scandal, um, especially the college kids. They just wanted money, and and um, also I, I do think this is you know the uh, matter of fact. Let me just backtrack. Um, Isaac Burton himself brought up a great point. He said this is the reason why college athletes need to get paid, you know, to prevent you know, stuff like this from happening in the future, you know, per, to prevent that one gambler who's like, hey, you know, maybe they get, maybe they cool with the star athlete in football or basketball and be like, hey, if you can do X, Y, and Z, I'll slide you, you know, if you can fix certain games, I can slide you some cash. Everyone's a happy camper. So this was, a, as I mentioned, just um, a great documentary. And, and also, and because of that, um, there's actually an interim policy that happened just last year where you know college athletes don't get paid per game or they're not on like a salary or anything but they are now allowed to get paid for their likeness or you know paid to do autographs and stuff like that so you know it seems like it's a change in the right direction in terms of you know being in favor for the college athlete getting paid for their work or of, of some sort they're not paid per game or they're not paid for the games, but they are allowed to get paid for their likeness and and stuff of that nature. So I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, I highly, highly recommend anyone to watch this documentary. I consider myself an avid uh, sports fan, you know, um, and I was unaware of this uh, point shaving scandal. Um, even though I gave you, you know, the the overall idea of how you know that 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 point shaving operation worked, there is a lot more into it. Um, you know, you know, you just definitely, you know, I don't want to say spoiler alert because this is the, um, this is some real life document stuff, documentary stuff that happened. You could literally Google these guys and find out the story for yourself. But just to be entertained, I highly recommend you still watch the documentary so you can see what transpired after these two games. Because I'm sure you're curious, okay, they only needed to get these two games. These two games, you know, went off without a hitch. <clears throat> How did this scandal get uncovered? So that's what I'll leave you with as far as not spoiling it for you. So you definitely want to watch some documentary to see how things went downhill when everything seemed to be all good after these first two games. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some Easter eggs or some hints that I mentioned, you know, the fact that people just don't know when to walk away when it comes to that gambling, which is why I don't do it. Um, and just not knowing your worth, man, and, and seeing the type of consequences it can really, you know, have on your life, man. So. Once again, I I don't know about a rating. I'm going to just let you know if you should watch it or not. And I'm going to say you should definitely watch it. Even if you're not a sports fan, 
you can watch this documentary and be like, wow, this was a crazy story. I can't believe this happened. So this is my time. I'm Ryan, just my opinion with Ryan. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'm signing out. Peace.